If you are someone that loves to run your amp a little bit hot for some extra gain and natural compression, and you aren't using your amp's effects loop, you might be running your amp completely wrong. Today, we are talking about an amp's effects loop and how to use it properly for your rig. If you love to get a little bit of extra gain and compression out of your amp, and you aren't using your amp's effects loop, you might be doing it entirely wrong. It's worth a shot, and I know it's a little bit of extra patching and cabling, but it could very well be worth it. Today, we are gonna talk about the different types of amp's effects loops, give you some audio examples to really consider what might be best for you, and show you a couple different approaches to using an amp's effects loop. Let's get into it and start right at the beginning. The first guitar amps were very simple and straightforward. You plugged your cable into the front of the amp as normal, and within the amp, it went from the preamp to the power amp, and then on to the speaker. Straightforward, easy to use, beautiful. Then guitar pedals were introduced, run into the front of that amp just as before, and everyone was happy, it was working great. However, amp builders started to add built-in overdrive and distortion into the amplifier, and this changed everything. Those amps that were once clean were now distorted and overdriven, changing the way those reverbs and delays, tremolos were sounding. Now, instead of being wide open and clean, they were now getting compressed and diminished because an overdrive built into the amp was being run after them. Changes had to be made. This is where the amp's effects loop comes into play. There are three main sections on an amplifier. We're gonna simplify this a bit, but essentially there is the preamp. This is where the tone stack lives, the tone controls, treble, bass, mids, whatever you might have on your amp. If you have a volume and a master volume, this is where that preamp volume sits. This is where you can really overdrive the amp by how you use that initial volume control. After that, we have the power section. The power section or the power tubes in your amp amplifies the preamp section cleanly and then sends it on to the third stage, which is your speaker. Again, I'm simplifying things a little bit here, but what we are doing with an amp's effects loop is we are taking that tone stack preamp section and we are moving it to before the wet effects. This essentially is a giant over the top overdrive pedal. The preamp can act like an overdrive, so you want to put it with the rest of your overdrives. If your amp has built-in distortion and gain, this also is in the preamp section. So instead of running an over-the-top overdrive after your wet effects, that would be plugging everything into the front of your amplifier, we are going to use what's called the four cable method, or your amp's effects loop. What we do is we go from our last dry effect, we plug into the input of the amplifier, then generally on the back of the amplifier, there's something called an effect send or a preamp out. This then goes to the first wet effect, and then after the last wet effect, we go to the effects return or the power amp in. Now, again, this is called the four cable method. We are using your preamp with your dry effects and the power amp and speaker after your last wet effect. If you're someone that likes to go back and forth using different amps, check out Audition. There's a link above and it allows you to do all of this without having to repatch your pedal board and rip up pedals. It's a straightforward product and easy to use. It's worth noting as well that there are two main types of amps effects loops. You've heard these two terms very commonly in previous videos, but there is a series effects loop and a parallel effects loop. Essentially, a series effects loop takes the preamp out or the effects send and sends 100% of that signal to your first wet effect. A parallel effects loop allows you a little bit more control, but is a little bit more complex on the amp builder side of things to implement. 
It basically takes the effects send or the preamp out of your amplifier and it sends it to two places. It sends a dry send to the power amp section and sends the other side of that signal to your wet effects. You are then generally able to blend between both. So you can add in a little bit more dry or go a little bit more towards the effect side of things up to 100% wet. 100% wet is the same as running a series effects loop, but anything other than that, you are now into parallel territory and it is really helpful to be able to run your wet effects in parallel as well. That way they can be in kill dry. Check out the link above to learn more about what it means to run your wet effects in parallel as it's a bigger topic than we can cover right now. Whether you have a series effects loop or a parallel effects loop, these next audio examples still apply to you the same way. First, we are going to run a chorus pedal into the front of a clean amp. This is also, you might have heard this term, known as a great pedal platform. So if you ever hear someone say, my amp is a great pedal platform, all they're saying is it has a lot of clean headroom and doesn't add any additional compression or overdrive to their sound. We are then going to do the same settings on the chorus pedal and we're gonna put it in front of an overdriven amp. You're gonna hear that chorus quite diminished and there's gonna be more compression added to it. Basically the chorus isn't going to be as easily heard. Without further ado, let's get into it. This is a chorus into the front of a clean amp. There you have it chorus into clean and chorus into an overdriven or distorted amp. If you're like me, you're thinking the same thing. Why would you ever try and hide your chorus pedal? Get rid of that second amp channel and let's just keep things simple and easy. Done. However, if your amp has a great built-in overdrive, we then need to get into the next audio examples and show you how to use this amp's effects loop. So let's add in the chorus, then into a delay, into the front of an overdriven, distorted amp. What you're gonna hear, listen out for this, is as the delay repeats diminish in volume, they are going to clean up. In the same way that you pull your volume back on your guitar to clean up an overdrive, that diminishing repeat will also clean up. And basically, it just doesn't sound great, it's not consistent, and it's much harder to work with. So we're gonna do delay into the front of that overdriven amp with chorus, just because we can. And then we're gonna move that delay and chorus into the amp's effects loop. Again, this is going to be using the amp input, the effects send or preamp out, and then the power amp in or effects return. I think we've labeled everything clearly enough for you so you can get a grasp on how to hook this up. <laughs> I still remember the first time I heard this, those delay repeats cleaning up as that volume diminished. It really doesn't sound all that great. Again though, if this is a sound that you love, it's not wrong, it's just not typically used. So decide what is best for you. Whether you wanna put your wet effects into your amp's effects loop, or you just wanna simply clean up your amp a little bit more and run everything into the front end, or mix and match between the two. Whatever is best suited for your rig, make sure that you are educated on how to wire it up, patch it in, and get the best sound for your context. I hope this video has been helpful, whether you have a series effects loop or a parallel effects loop, or none at all. Make sure you run your rig appropriately. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next week.